Hello everyone, I'm Hellmouth, how are you doing? And today I'd like to talk to you about Ghost Reaper Girl, the new manga by Keita Kihisa known for his 100 plus chapter run of Rosario Vampire, a manga that flaws and all stands among my favorites, and one which you probably never heard about, and if you did it was likely only bad things, mostly because of what is definitely one of the least faithful anime adaptations ever, but I digress. Now why does any of that matter? To you probably not that much to be honest, but the fact that he wrote Rosario combined with the art of Ikeda, which is even better now than before and god is it good. Those two things were what made me give this a shot despite its small rating which is oh my god. And from the 6 chapters I've read, averaging 47 pages each, so not really your typical 6 chapters, I'm quite positively surprised. So with all that out of the way, what is the story about? This is the story of Chloe Love, 28 year old actress whose door into acting is closing, having grown up in the slums and having to fight to survive, she was inspired by the beautiful actresses in Street Signs and decided to become one herself. But as it tends to be with dreams, not everything goes exactly as you wish it would, now does it? And from then on she has only managed to get bottom of the barrel type jobs. And no, I don't mean having a small number of lines, I mean playing a corpse in the background type of work. Even her most relevant acting gig, the action series Ghost Reaper Girl, wherein she plays the titular character who wields two sides and a swimsuit in order to defeat ghosts. Which is quite meta in a lot of ways, which you will notice in a few minutes, being a role in the show that was essentially irrelevant. Hey, just like this channel. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. So the story starts with Chloe having to run away from ghosts trying to possess her, since she's apparently a great vessel for them and so they want to go inside her. Not joking about that part, the ghosts do say literally they want to go inside her to possess her, get your mind out the gutter guys. Well luckily for her a very handsome ghost named Kyloid is there to save her and although he is a ghost turns out he's a ghost reaper and the ghosts that attack Chloe are escapees from ghost jail. Now there's one thing that I need to address. Kyloid, the Deuteragonist, is probably what's turning off a lot of people from this story. He is a self-proclaimed gentleman and lolicon. Oh hell no! <sighs> a character having bad traits doesn't make for a bad story. Just look at Mushoku Tensei for example. And in this case it's even less so because Kai never really acts like a lolicon. It's something just used as a verbal gag in which he says, oh yeah by the way I'm a lolicon or some shit like that without really doing anything that would make you think he should go to ghost jail himself. Also the few times this joke does happen he is reprimanded by everyone else for it, so it's not like the manga isn't defending him. And so I'd place this issue in the same category as dumb panty shots where you might not like it, but it doesn't really matter, rather than something that could be deemed truly problematic. So now that the ghost is out of the closet, let's get back to the story. Kai saves Chloe from ghosts and turns out the one thing he loves more than admiring lollies from afar is Chloe Love, his favorite actress. Wow, a ghost whose favorite actress is one that did a show about reaping ghosts? I'm sure there won't be any allusions to BDSM in this manga. So wait, how does he fight the ghosts? Oh, handcuffs? <laughs> Well, anyways, he fights them off and proceeds to tell her of her incredible power as a ghost medium, which is why she is bound to be chased after by ghosts who desire to take over her body. After this, she goes away and is once more chased by the same ghosts. And once more, Kai comes to save the day. However, this time we finally get to what made me want to keep reading this, outside of the amazing art of course, which is just mwah, amazing and that is Chloe herself. Now right from the start there aren't many female shonen protagonists out there, much less adult woman, and while that would be enough to make her stand out among the crowd in a way, what really sold her for me was something else entirely. You see they do the classic run away I'll hold them off and she does run away, but then we get to understand the why behind her wanting to be an actress. The reason she wanted to be an actress is because she felt ignored by the world as a homeless kid from the slums and she just wants people to recognize her. What she always wanted was validation, and I would say that's quite relatable, don't we all? She wanted her life to shine and wanted to be admired like the actresses in those street signs. Acting itself was never the main aspect of it, and Kai was the first to admire her, the first to think that she shone bright. And that's why she just had to turn around and go save him. And this is where we finally get to see the power system of this battle manga, which fits so perfectly with her actress backstory. As a ghost medium, she can allow herself to be possessed, gaining the powers of ghosts by letting them reside inside her. 
And so the former actress of Ghost Reaper Girl, the swimsuit wearing scythe wielder, combined with a Ghost Reaper to become a swimsuit wearing scythe wielding Ghost Reaper. This is the kind of dumb fun that I've been missing, and luckily it's coming back in full force with things like this and Dan the Dan. There's a certain charm that comes in stories that both take themselves seriously, but also know how to make fun of themselves from time to time and be more lighthearted. Anyways, after this transformation and action scene, we get to the end of the 85 page long first chapter, which concludes with Kai becoming her familiar and promising to make her shine. Now, while I thought the first chapter was pretty good, it only gets better from then on. The second chapter introduces us to what ends up becoming her second familiar, the cat spirit Noel, and I appreciate Chloe's character more and more each chapter. In this second chapter, we learn that there are ghost devouring ghosts out there that will forever starve to devour more ghosts. And I love how they tied her past as a homeless kid in the streets, eating out of trash cans to her empathy towards Noelle, who is one such ghost. In some stories it feels like the hero is doing good things just because. They have empathy for everyone and are good to everyone, they are these perfect model citizens. But that's not the case here. At the end of the day her goal is quite self-interested. And so when she has these moments, where she shows this compassion and empathy for others, it just feels so much more genuine. To show us someone who is just as human, just as flawed, as selfish and insecure as us, and showing their ability to still show empathy and compassion, just hits a lot harder than your typical goody two-shoes doing the same. As I've said before, I have a soft spot for stories that manage to balance serious and light-hearted elements. That kind of writing to me just shows heart. It's not a one-note story built to appeal to the largest amount of people possible. You can see that it's a passion project. And through all of its flaws, that's the one truly standout point in Ikeda's writing. He writes characters with hearts, ones that you can feel that he loves to write. So after the second chapter, I was sold. They add Noelle to the party, which as of now gives her my favorite form between the two, and I could kinda see where this story was going. Chloe's going to collect husbandos by saving them from themselves, she will reap evil ghosts, and she will use the fact that she's doing good for others to learn to value herself instead of looking for outside validation. And so far, that guess looks to be correct. Chloe goes to Arkham Bullet, which is the Soul Society Meister Academy kind of organization in this manga, and starts both saving and reaping ghosts. As of what I've read, that's it really. And after six chapters, it looks like a solid all-around execution of the shonen formula, with three big standout points. These being the art, which I would say is easily among the best out there. Chloe, who manages to both be very unique as a protagonist, while keeping the traditional charms of the typical shonen main character. And again, as corny as it sounds, I will keep on saying it. It's not a shallow manga. It's a passion project. It has heart. And as subjective a statement as that sounds, I'd say it's palpable. And you might feel the same if you just give it a shot. Oh, and one last thing to address is that this manga is, is read from left to right. I don't know why it just is and to this point it still gets me confused sometimes. So with that out of the way, while ghosts might ask to come inside you, I will only ask for a like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. I hope you have a fine day and without further ado, I'm Hellmouth, signing out.